Jesus. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Food, Wine, and Whiskey in Your Own Backyard. I am Rob, and Carter here as always. How you doing, Carter? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm excited, man. Looking forward to this conversation. Should be some fun. Uh, I guess. You think so? <laughs> no, yes. Two, two serious guys on tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah, and we are all about the serious Very whiskey deep talk. and intellectual conversation about to happen. Yeah, all the all okay. the intricacies and facts. <laughs> okay, listen. Do you guys now, have another guest lined up that we don't know okay. about? <laughs> Although we may not be the most serious people in the world, I'm cap- semi capable of an, a semi intellectual conversation. I, I've <laughs> I've seen you have those on other shows, so I, I know it's there, and we're going to pull it out of you tonight. <laughs> yeah, just not on ours. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, Dan and Sean joining the show tonight. We appreciate it, guys. Uh, hope you guys are having a good night. Hope Thanks you had a great us. Thanksgiving, man. We just yeah. passed the holiday. Hope you spent some time with some family and friends and got full on food and drank plenty of bourbon. Oh, yeah. This was probably, I mean, not to be a downer, this might be one of the worst Thanksgivings I've ever had. Oh, man. So my wife, my son oh, had the stomach man. flu going into Thanksgiving, right? My wife had it during Thanksgiving. And so it was like a super like segregated, like I went to my parents, but it was only for like an hour and a half. And then I came home just to take care of my wife. It was like a whole thing. Oh, that's you know? oh, yeah. did, you have, did you guys have a, did you guys have a better Thanksgiving at least? Well, my, my Thanksgiving, you had family in, so yours yeah. was fairly smooth. I, I guess other than, you know, things went a little later than I thought. Well, that's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. We just kept drinking, but I think by the time I got to the food, I was like not fully tasting it. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, we went up to Dallas to see some family up there. Uh, went up Wednesday night, got a hotel, and then Thursday morning we're at the store getting things to, to kind of take over and contribute some appetizers or whatever and get a phone call that uh, one of the family members they think has COVID went to the doctor, and the doctor oh, was fairly man. certain that's what they had. Said we wouldn't get the test back until the following day. So we were like, well, shit, let's uh, check out, go home, and try to get home before dinner and do something back in Houston. And right, uh, about right. the time we got on the road – get the call that test came back already and it's negative. They went oh, and got goodness. one more rapid test. It was also negative. So okay. turned back around <laughs> and went, <laughs> went and had Thanksgiving okay. in, in Dallas. You, you could have just said you already committed to Carter. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're already going to his Thanksgiving. So sorry. Yeah. 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 So, but all in all, yeah, exactly. That's true. <laughs> That's true. All right. As we go through our conversation, just have some fun tonight. Uh, we like to ask our guests five questions uh, that might, that isn't related to the topic that, you know, might drive the conversation tonight, which is bourbon, whiskey, those kind of things. So uh, we'll kind of throw these questions out as we go through the conversation. But we'll start off the show with this first one, which is, and, and this is just to let, you know, listeners kind of get to know a little bit more about you guys, you know, other than just uh, your personalities with whiskey and things like that. So first question your favorite 80s movie. Okay, so we were born uh. in the 80s, like the <laughs> late 80s. So yeah. I don't know when movies came out, whether it's 80s or 90s. Okay. But mm-hmm. I do like some old movies. Okay, I call them old. They're not that old. <laughs> okay, when did Pulp Fiction come out? I, I believe 80s? that was 91 or something say, like that. 90s. Right. Pretty close, though. Pretty you know close. I mean? Pretty close. Like, Great movie. We'll, we'll get. We'll, we'll give you eighties, nineties. We'll give you guys two decades since you were. You're, we, I look at the eighties as far oh. as uh, movies as there are a lot of classics, and I, even my kids who are you know early twenties go back and, and enjoy sure. some of those shows. So I didn't know if uh, Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah, yeah things. All like right, that. you nailed mine. <laughs> that was See, it. Easy. That's an eighties movie. Yeah, yeah. Back to the first Future. Movie. You know what? Breakfast Club. The first. The first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has to be 80s. It is 80s. It is it's 80s. probably 90s. <laughs> it has to be. Great movie. Fantastic movie. The live action one. Do you, it's okay. Do you, do you want to know what Matt Porter said? <laughs> What's that? He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Okay. No, Matt's never even seen He-Man. He definitely has not. He's a full-blown liar. <laughs> he caught me off guard with that Yeah, he, he went obscure, uh, which was predictable. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Is that Arnold Schwarzenegger's movie? I think so. <laughs> it's not his movie. It's got to be, right? It's gotta, who else is going to play He-Man? No, no. Live it was, action? Uh, 
I thought it was the guy who was a Russian boxer in uh in Rocky. Oh, in Rocky? Yeah. Oh uh, my god. Ivan Drago. Because you remember the cartoon, he was a blonde guy. Dolph yeah. Lundgren? Yeah, yeah, Dolph. I think yep. I'm pretty sure it was him. Dude, I, I Wait, must are have a... any of the Rockies from the eighties? Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, one, yeah. Rocky one, two, or five, whichever one. Five oh, was yeah. the best you know, No, Nine four, years. sorry. <laughs> Four Fer- is the best one, but Rocky one and two were really good. Wow, so really I'll go good. With those. You know, Ferris Bueller's yeah. Day Off, things like that were in the 80s. Yeah. But, okay, I got a question for you. You guys, when you started this, was it just because you were bored? You know, I, wait, correct me first. When did it actually start? I mean, I think we saw a lot of the early videos, um, and, and it looked like it was in the hut, but it might have been an, an exercise gym at that time or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Yeah, this is the third rendition third iteration of the, the hut. Set. Yeah, um, the first hut was at a different house. We, okay, uh, me and Ricky have moved. My wife and I have moved since then. We shot a total of two videos there. One made it to the light of day, and yeah. the other one, I hope Dan burns. made it to patron. Yeah, I know patrons have seen it. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> it was shot on a cell phone um, <laughs> with no power, and another friend was holding up a cell phone light for like a key light for us. So yeah. it it was pretty fantastically bad. Um. But that was back in 2018, so mm-hmm. like May 2018 is when it started. So yeah, and were were you guys producing on a, on a regular basis back then? Were you trying to put stuff out? Like, um, we're even doing one a week after, at that point. Yeah, after the after the first video went out, it went out on a Thursday. After that first video went out, um, then we put videos out every Monday and Thursday since then. Okay. So, <sighs> wow. Um, we started live streaming probably like almost a year into it. Yeah, and then, eight months maybe. Um. Our the Friday series that we do now started after Advent last year, so we've added a little bit here and there, you yep. know, since we started. But the Mondays and Thursdays have been really consistent. So yeah, yeah, I I, <laughs> I have to tell you, like uh, when I first started getting really into you know whiskey mo- bourbon mostly uh, in the beginning, like a few years ago, your channel was like a breath of fresh air because I'm used to like some of the groups that I won't mention around here that were like super serious and like uh, just totally shit on anybody who, um, you know, would post anything new and would be like, uh, I'm dumb, you know, that kind of thing. You, you guys took it really lighthearted. I loved it. Uh, it was funny. It was entertaining and it really like, believe it or not, you guys educated me a ton on bourbon and whiskey. Well, I appreciate the kind of words. Yeah. Man. We know um, it's fake, but and we appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, like, I kind of made it up. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I'm sitting here going, man, man, what a kiss ass. Hey, <laughs> hey, He's like, man. It's gotta be nice. They're here. Yeah. Let's just say something nice. It'll make them feel good. I, I have been a patron for like two years now, I think. That's that's fair. Oh. I, I do know that it's been a really long time. Yeah. Um. I believe that we still owe you two bottles back, actually. Hey, you do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're both and they're both here, and they both still have whiskey in them. I promise. <laughs> I, I, I just wrote them off, so it's okay. <laughs> so the um the funny thing is, it you know, back when we started the channel, um, I had watched a few other channels. I wasn't really a part of any whiskey Facebook groups at that point. Or anything. I watched a few different channels at the time, and a lot of them, like you said, there there's so much. Whiskey is such an old thing, right? There's a lot of history involved in it. Um, it takes a lot of time. A lot of the people that work in the industry have been in the industry for a really long time, which is why they're so passionate about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but what some of that causes is like a really dry, intense seriousness that it like, it's like, okay, this, I don't know that everybody for the rest of whiskey's life needs to be super serious all the time. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, I've never been a super serious person. Sean and I's friendship has never really been that way. And so it was one of those things that it was like, listen, we're going to sit here and talk shit anyways. Oh, right. Yeah. And might as well do it on camera and just I, be us. I will say at one point in time, before, when I pitched the channel idea to Sean, Sean told me <laughs> no. And then he said, I'm not going to be the guy who says this smells like peaches on camera. <laughs> and now Sean says some of the stupidest tasting notes you'll hey, ever hear in your life. I was so. going to say, uh, like you guys really <laughs> educated me on proper tasting notes. Sure, sure. <laughs> did you watch monday's video uh i did dan, <laughs> dan, the the coy hill uh dan just said smelled like two angels having sex yeah and it does i stand by that 
I think that should go on a press release. Oh, good. So, they're, uh, they're like I, sitting six deep at the store here. I'll go get one. I think you ought to. <laughs> I think you ought to put that on some kind of dumbest tasting notes. Some kind of scratch and sniff, so I can kind of understand what you're talking about with that. See, that's, that's I think it takes some CTE uh, <laughs> that's you know, that you really got to have. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a, a couple blows to the head, a couple, you know. <laughs> concussions and then you you understand what that smell like yeah you start to see things differently <laughs> you know what i mean um but yeah that's honestly that was one of the reasons i just had this conversation literally a few days ago but that was the re- one of the reasons we started the channel was just it was like in my head and not that we ever thought it would be what it is today no. but in my head i thought there's no way in hell that there's not other people like us hanging out shooting the shit you know giving each other a hard time and, and like joking around while drinking whiskey and those people can mm-hmm. still like whiskey or love whiskey and be passionate and, and they're not that there's not a time and a place, right? There's a time and a place to be serious. There's a time and a place to have fun, whatever. Um, but there's no way that there aren't people out here who just want to hang out and have a good time and also enjoy whiskey and maybe get into it and talk about it, whatever. But this, this like, listen, there's a lot of Facebook groups that are still the way that you're talking about. Like mm-hmm. there's tons of them. Some of them absolutely hate us and, they hate us because oh, yeah. of of some of the reasons the other people like us, right? They hate us because it's not super serious and because it seems like everything's a joke or whatever, you know, whatever the words are. But I just don't think – I don't have the energy for everything in my life to be that serious all the time. I just don't. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, There's, to me, you, you, your show translates to what whiskey's supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be hanging out and, and sharing with friends, and, you know, you, when you get together with buddies and things like that, you shoot the shit, you bust balls, you do stuff like that. And right. Mm-hmm. That's what the evening's right. about, just having a good time. And I think, you know, on your channel, I agree with with Carter that uh, that's what I enjoyed about it. And I remember seeing some people talk to me about, I'm not a huge uh, bourbon or whiskey drinker, but I enjoy the right. show. <laughs> I enjoy watching yeah, these two guys sure. on the show. So that, that says a lot about you two, just putting well, out thanks, content man, that, uh, you know, entertains people, just kind of keeps them engaged. Sure. Yeah, man. So so, when's the Mescal channel coming out? Okay, oh, dude, you want to you want to hear uh, <laughs> you want to hear some wild tasting notes? I bet Sean and I could go off on some Mezcal for a while, <laughs> and it would offend more people than you'd think. Um, <laughs> that's just not our spirit. It is not. I I think it's trash, but you know some of our really good friends love it. But I can't yeah. stand it. <laughs> so so here's yeah. a question: You two guys, when you started the channel, you pitched it to Sean. Were you guys already into bourbon? I mean, did you guys have a little what you might call a collection, you know, 20, 30, 40 bottles? Or is this something like, you know, hey, we're 30, getting into yeah. bourbon and let's just let's just go with it. Let's just start the channel there and see where it goes. 30 bottles, I bet. Okay. Give or take, yeah. Yeah, probably around 30. And then um, when we started, like, on um, the journey to producing content, we probably hit 50 pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of spiraled out of control from there, you know? The, um, honestly, like, I, I think that I had, like, a... Oh, in the twenties, maybe, maybe low thirties at my house at the time, Sean probably had somewhere around 10 to yeah, 15 10 to 20 or 20 home. or something yeah. at home. Um, and it's like, I still wouldn't say like even having had that many, that many bottles at the time, I wouldn't say that we knew anything about it. Like there's times now where like we go places and people say things and I'm still like, Holy shit. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. And And we've been doing it like a lot for three years, right? (laughs) So it's one of those things where there's a reason like master, master, like true master distillers are true master distillers. And they've been like doing this or doing something in a distillery for like a million years. Yeah. Because there's so much that you can learn and there's so much to take away from it that it's just, it it seems like it's like never ending. Yeah. Like I feel like we know a lot about like labels and like stuff like that now, but the the inner workings and the depths of like how it's made and all like the processes yeah grain to glass there's a lot that goes on in between sure Mm -hmm. we went to we went to where were we oh we went to still austin Mm -hmm. and learn how they proof their whiskey down and that was a couple months a month or two ago yeah sean i had never heard of that before like how still austin does that and it was one of those things where it's like like you still go to distilleries and learn how people are doing things differently and thinking like, well, we've been to 15 distilleries this year. We pretty much know how distilleries work in theory. And then you go to one and they're like, so we actually proof ours down this way because of this. And like, we can show you the difference. And it was yeah. like, well, we've never even heard of that. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah, De- definitely. Uh, like, it, well, anyway, that kind of brings me to a, an interesting question. So we love still Austin. We're, we're fans uh, of, of that whiskey, but 
Texas whiskey on a whole. What's your uh, What's your opinion? Next question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, enough said. Uh, we get you. We no, get you. I, I'll, I'll go out and say I can't stand most of it. Uh, and I live here. Uh, so there, <laughs> there, 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 there you go. Uh, I mean, I'm, there is definitely a, a very unique quality about Texas whiskey. And for us, it's normally like that hot, fast oak. And like a lot of it has it. Texas Some of summer. it doesn't. Yeah. And there's a, like a lot of the stuff that doesn't have that, like really in your face Oak profile. We enjoy. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. I think personally, I think that Texas should have its own category. Yeah. Um, because I think that, I think that you, I've had plenty of Irish whiskey. That's very different from bourbon, right? Like that's a normal thing. Like everybody knows if they have Jameson or green spot or whatever, and then they have like Buffalo trace, they know that those are going to be very different experiences. Right. So I think, that if you have Buffalo Trace and then you have like Garrison Brothers, I think that you're also going to have like a world's apart difference. Mm -hmm. So I think that Texas should have its own definition, its own category. Listen, Tennessee whiskey has its own category. It's not even real. It's actually the same thing. (laughs) Just made up. Right. And so like how the fact that Texas doesn't have its own thing when it actually tastes different is like crazy to me. Yeah. So would you agree that, you know, when you think bourbon, I think, you know, Kentucky is kind of that bar when you, when you think, you know, bourbon, um, would you say that or agree that uh, still Austin is the closest kind of profile to what people think about when they think Kentucky bourbon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, I would of, say, yeah, yeah, it has that or like, well, we haven't had everything. So we haven't had all of them. Yeah. I know we liked um, Lone Elm. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's true. We, we liked Lone Elm. Um, I always think of Witherspoon, but that's Witherspoon source. Yeah. Not from source, Texas. Yeah. I like iron root. I think they do a good job. Yeah. Hit or miss. We, there, the um, when we went down to the whiskey tribe event this year in Austin, mm-hmm. uh, that was the one tent, the only tent I went to to get whiskey from was Iron Root, and um, I liked it. I my thing with te- Texas whiskey is, if you know it's te- Texas whiskey going into it, you're gonna have so much better of an experience than if you go into it just knowing it's whiskey mm-hmm, and yeah. thinking like I'm gonna drink bourbon, right? Because then it's just gonna like blow your it's gonna blow you apart and then you're gonna be like, why did it taste like that? Because you weren't prepared. And then you're just upset. And then you're pissed off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Especially if you bought a bottle. Well well yeah. if somebody were to put like a Octomore in front of you and you're expecting yeah. a Highland Scotch, you know, you'd be like, yeah. what the hell is that? You know? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well so here's a question. There's a lot of people that say Texas makes Good single malts, and that's probably where the that I agree should with. stay in. Have you had some single malts from down here? What are your thoughts on those? Um, are any of those from down from Texas? Balconies would be uh, the first one that comes to mind that makes a single malt. I, I, uh, wait, I, is that the black label? Yeah, yes. we've had that sent to us. Okay, we've had some, we like that. We've had some black label Balconis that we like because that's one of the few. We're not like huge Balconis fans, yeah. and that those black labels are some of the few Balconis that we've had that we didn't really enjoy. enjoyed. Yeah. yeah. Yep, um, I would agree. We I, we probably haven't had too many other single molds. You know, like what, I, you know what I really do like? I just think it's cost too much money. Is the um, uh, the Belconis or wait, Garrison Brothers uh, Belmarea? Mm. I like that, but I just wish it was like a hundred bucks instead yeah. of two hundred. You know what I mean? It's or the re- cowboy. ridiculous price. It, yeah, the cowboy at yeah, like two fifty is crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's too much money. I like like I genuinely like drinking Belmarea. Yeah. Uh, but like dude at a hundred, I would always have the bottle type thing, right? Like if mine got empty, then I would go buy another one. But at two hundred dollars, it's like it's too dude, that's so much money for like a four ish year bottle of whiskey. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, All right. Second question. second question for you two guys. Favorite childhood meal. So this could be Something that grandma cooked or mom cooked, or it could be, you know, some a baked good that somebody made, or it could be a restaurant that, Uh-oh. you know, once a month you guys got treated to wherever. But when you think back about enjoying food as a, and when I say childhood, I'm, we, we can go into your teenage years, you know, but uh, from, you know, when you can remember eating food and enjoying it up into your teenage years, what was your favorite? It's probably been the same my whole life. Has um, it really? Because I know Canes, Canes wasn't around back then. Okay. Listen, Canes is I'm I'm not hearing anything that Canes is not the best chicken Dan restaurant would be, in the world. Uh, slightly heavier if we had a Canes around. Yeah, happily. Yeah. Um it would be portly lad. The um 
Dude, but your family didn't make pizza, though, right? He's saying, like, homemade meal. It doesn't have to be homemade. Yeah, like, if, you, if you went to a restaurant, if there was a pizza joint that you loved, that, that would count. Okay, but. name the pizza restaurant, then. Right. Sean's just saying pizza in general. He's pizza being lazy general. with his anchor. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. So there's nothing that you think about with your mom or your grandma that they made that you went, man, when mom makes that, I just apps. I mean, I, want, I could eat the whole damn thing. Uh, actually when my mom used to make, um, like homemade chicken noodle soup and okay. make like handmade noodles and stuff like that. That's probably one of my favorites. Oh, damn. So, so that's a um, legitimate answer. Yeah. See, that is way better. Get the old pizza cutter <laughs> out. Make the you. Noodles. Back to pizza. Here we go. Yep. So that's how you cut the noodles, Dan. <laughs> okay. um, I'm, I would, I probably like thinking back it's probably la- lasagna my mom's lasagna because okay. she doesn't put like mushrooms in it which i hate Ugh. she doesn't put that dumb white cheese in it which is disgusting ricotta, ricotta. yeah that so she makes a bechamel dude. okay Ugh. you know like i just did it even taste good it tastes like grease mm-hmm. cheese and a way too much meat and it's the best thing in the world <laughs> perfect you know what i mean yeah, yeah. like there I, you go. I love it yeah Okay, so that, that brings us to the question of food. Do you, do you guys like to cook or anything? I mean, do you guys enjoy cooking nope. and food and things like trying new things, or is it? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm the worst. Dan, Dan can microwave with the best of them. I can. <laughs> oh, God. I can, push, I can push that add 30 second button faster than anybody in the Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> Me and my wife cook quite a bit, actually, though. Um, we've done some like adventure stuff, doing like our own beef Wellingtons and stuff like nice. that. They did not go cool. out. Uh, turned out fantastic. <laughs> oh, that was kind of hard. <laughs> that's, that's actually Ruined had, that piece um, of meat. Last year. Because um, it was during quarantine and we didn't go to see anyone. So we just went and bought two beef tenderloins and um, like just individual ones and made small beef Wellingtons for herself. So nice. yeah, we enjoy cooking a lot. Been doing it less. My wife is way better at cooking than I am. So I just don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> She like grills steak better than me. She makes hamburgers better than me. She bakes sand. Like we have salmon. salmon like bar. that's everything I can't do that she can do. And so, unfortunately for her, she's stuck doing it. Because you're gonna learn. Just because like, I was watching the Great British Baking Show on Netflix, right? Yep. And one of those guys supposedly who made it to the finals has only been baking for eighteen months. And I looked at Ricky and I go. That means in one and a half years, I can do that. And she goes, no, definitely you not. <laughs> <laughs> in 18 years, I don't yeah. think you can do that. So I don't, I, I make like, you know, I can make some scrambled eggs up, you know, and that's probably about the extent of it. So now are you adventurous <laughs> eaters? Do you guys like to try different foods when you go out or go different places or anything? Or is it just kind of, we have our lane and we stay in it. <laughs> I'm like in the middle of those two okay. extremes. Yeah. Like okay, it's so, very mood dependent. If we're going to like a a, a nicer a nice, place yeah. that has like, or maybe even like a tapas plate okay. where you can try different things, I'm into that. But if I'm risking my whole dinner on something, yeah, yeah. you're just gonna go steak. Yeah, yeah you're just gonna go steak. <laughs> it, it's hard. Um, like we just we went to a dinner recently that had like, I would say very fancy food. Yeah, and it was funny because they asked us if we had food allergies or like if we didn't like stuff before we went and I responded and I was like, Oh, maybe like, I don't like tomatoes or mushrooms or onions that much. And they're like, Oh, don't worry about that. And we get down there and there's like oysters. I'm like, that is not <laughs> what I thought was going to happen. You, but you did eat it. I did eat like the, here's the thing. I'll try it. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it a shot. It was cooked. It was also, I can't, I just, I still, I still won't eat oysters. But, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll always you, try You it, won't but. eat them fried or anything. I mean, on the half shell, I get no. you don't like. But anyway, in anyway, no. a po' boy no. or nothing. I think the, these oysters were, like, twice baked or something like that. I don't know uh, what they were, were called. They, were, they they were they on the like shell? Were they still on the shell? Yeah, yeah they were yeah. still on the so shell. So, like a Rockefeller. Okay. Yeah, like with cheese and stuff on the top. It, it wasn't like that. Um, I think there was, like, a, what, what? Like, because when we went to New Orleans, my wife loves oysters. So, she got a bunch of those. Ew. Um, But they weren't, like. Oysters, Rockefeller. They were. I don't know what they. Even so if them. you took it, if you take, if you make a twice baked potato, but yeah. they said the the potato is an oyster, it was just like that. Really? Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so it wasn't slimy. Yeah. But I still, I it just, wasn't smothered in cheese though. Ah. It was not fully smothered in cheese. Yeah. No. But it was like some. It was baked or whatever. It wasn't raw or whatever. But I still like. I'm good. all set. Like we go to another restaurant and they ask if I want oysters. I'm I'm good. Like I'll just have something else. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're definitely love or hate. I mean, like I grew up yeah. like down in this area, and you know, it's like part of life. 
Uh, but uh, my man here uh, grew up in Missouri, so I don't know if he's he's down with the oyster. Or not. I, I love oysters. I mean, I've been exposed to a lot. Of, you know, Houston, we're, we're pretty lucky that we get all kinds of cool foods down here, the culture, right. diversity. We get right. all kinds of flavors. So, yeah, I, I used to be the pickiest eater ever. My wife tells a story of when we were dating, and I was in the Army, and I was stationed in El Paso where I met her. Uh, if we went through, well, I'll share with you. It, it, I hate tomatoes. I hated lettuce. I hated anything on my burger. I wanted ketchup, cheese, and bun and meat, and that was it. And uh, my wife tells the story and laughs because there was one time we'd go through this Wendy's that was by our house, and every time I would order through the drive through and drive off, my burger was wrong. It had lettuce and tomato and all that. So <laughs> one time I'm pissed off, and my wife's like, don't go in. I go, I'm going in. And we walk into this Wendy. She's following me, just begging me not to do anything. And I walk in, and I look at everybody, I yell real loud, do you all know who I am? Do you know who the fuck I am? And everybody's looking at me, we don't know who you are. And I'm like, absolutely you do, because every time I come through your drive through you fuck up my meal. And she was just, <laughs> oh, my god. But 30 years later, we're still together, so it's, it's good. You know, yeah, that that's a. I was that picky of an eater. I mean, you couldn't. You even, still she would say, just Wendy's. take it off. <laughs> <laughs> but There's uh, still not a lot on that any of the Wendy's franchise on that side of the state. That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, so, did you just pour some prideful goat? Uh, yeah. Uh, we we're, right. were going to talk to you about this. Like, I'll pour that with you. I'll go grab it. Just, okay, I cool. Label look really familiar. Uh, what do you, what do you, what do you think about this stuff? We enjoyed a lot. Okay. I man, we I haven't had it. Yeah, since we uh we shot with Chris. We've basically killed a bottle of it. This is our second one. Yeah. Um and we so, we enjoyed it. Chris is probably going to listen to this, so I think we ought to talk about oh. him a little bit, calling names or something yeah. to make sure he he you knows know, that when know. we posted the other day that we were going to have you guys on, he was like, "Great guys!" Like, you know, on our <laughs> so, so now that he said something nice about us, uh, he did a terrible job with these prideful goats. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I can't dude. believe anybody bought them. A, a blindfolded chimp could have mixed this better. <laughs> it, it, my, the arrogant goat. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Carter was earlier before we started. He goes, "Isn't goat enough?" I mean, does he have to be prideful? I mean, he's our greatest, greatest of, all, of time. all time. I mean, I, what I, the hell? I'm the most arrogant greatest of all time ever. <laughs> um, no, these, I, I really, I think he did a good job and yeah. obviously he didn't make the whiskey right, but he did, uh, you know, put this label and stuff together and then have somebody else put the whiskey inside the glass bottle for him. Um, but yeah. for, real, <laughs> for real, this is, it, it is good whiskey and I like what he's doing that's different than a lot of people is listen, a lot of people are sourcing whiskey and a lot of people have a a label or whatever, you know, a lot of these distilleries have labels and they're sourcing. What he's doing differently is not like absolutely destroying people's wallets with the same whiskey that other people are destroying people's wallets with. Right. So, um, I, I think the first release of prideful was like a hundred bucks for 15 year barrel of whiskey, something like that. Yep. Um, I know the second one was a little bit more runny, and more money. Yeah. Like it was like 150, 125, something like that. You 125 money, money. money. Okay. Um, what was it? It was 125. 125. Oh, yeah. Um, but I mean, he's putting out some other stuff here shortly that, um, market wise, like matches literally the best value in the market. So oh, yeah, this is bad. It, it's just crazy. It was, it was back down to 115. Which yeah. Is I was going to say, I just got one the other day. I just yeah, randomly sitting on the three. shelf. Like, that's the only lucky thing that I'm ever going to have. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, I think it was like 115 at Specs or something. Yeah, that's what I got it. And he just released a 21-year-old uh, Grand Champagne Cognac. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Todd brought it over the other day. And oh, it, you've it tried really it? Good. Yeah, I tried it the other day. Do they Gulf have it at Gulf Coast Distillers? Like, yeah, available? It's, it's distillery only now, but it will be showing up in the Specs around here. Sick. I want to try that. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's he, he's into like so like he's into rum and cognac and whiskey. Like he's into so many different things too. That is cool because like I, he's like he's into so many things and I he like he put on like relatively recently he put on like a comedy festival type yeah, thing like a small comedy show or yeah. something like it, it's just cool. I don't know. He makes a lot of stuff happen. He's been really helpful. I've asked him a lot of questions, like offline. Very transparent with how he and, does stuff. Um, he'll, he answers every question I ask him, and, and like with honesty, where a lot of people, 
uh, are very secretive and unwilling to help. So I, we're we're doing a podcast with him tomorrow. Oh no, and, oh, wow. and he's he's not. Yeah, yeah, he's an awesome guy. He's you're the gonna, best. You're gonna be back on whiskey neat. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> I, I was yeah, giving him a hard greens. time yeah. because we had him on uh, several months ago, and I told him to make sure he got you guys down here for uh, the they, whiskey social. Yeah. And, and he didn't make that happen, mm-hmm. so we got to bust his chops a little bit because we were hoping to get. Yeah, you. he's a bad friend. He didn't even ask. Know. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Dude, terrible person. I, 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 he was uh, he for that whiskey social man. That it is so crazy what they do. Like they have bottles from the '60s and the '70s, turkey and stuff like that, and they're just you know pouring it. It, it's it's awesome, man. Uh, and he's crazy. He just he finds the bottles, he acquires them. <laughs> or Wade Woodard just brings his own bunker collection and starts pouring <laughs> pappies and BTAC for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I did see some pictures of him pouring some yeah. old dusties in people's glasses there. So there, yeah. I might have been in one of those crazy photos. Bottles out <laughs> What's that, Sean? <laughs> I said he gives out a lot of crazy bottles to his guests yeah. when they come he, on. He like does. he always gives out like the birth year bottles and stuff, and it's insane mm-hmm. what he's acquired. I'm yeah. always amazed at how he gets those things. I'm like, how the hell do you get that? Yeah. I mean, I don't know enough. To... He's got a network here that, um, that we need to establish. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Uh, I was gonna say, when does this episode come out? How this, far in the future? This would be three months, just after Christmas. Three months. Oh, we got plenty. I was just gonna say. Um, so we're shooting our advent calendar right now. Um, and those are sourced through our patrons. They send us stuff. Um, and our last sample that we had was day six. And that was actually uh, an 89 cheesy gold foil. Oh, and wow. I was like, holy smokes. I was like, um, that was a birth year bottle. And we both had it blind and we're like, dude, this is amazing whiskey. Um, so I was like, Stuff like that is just irreplace, irreplaceable stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So that, that makes me ask you guys yeah. a question. We had David Jennings on, and he brought up a good point that I, I'm a dumbass. I didn't even think about this. We started talking about Dusties, and he's like, just make your own. You know, he said, you know, start putting wild turkey away. Start putting rare breeds away and, and different things that you like, you know, from, from different distilleries. And then in 10, 12, 15 years, you know, you have something that's – it's obviously going to be different with the new production that'll be coming out, whether it's bottles, labels, sure. mash bill, whatever. And uh, sure. you get to enjoy some cool stuff. And so I, I, for the last couple of months, I've been piling away a whole bunch of stuff, just trying to uh, build up that little bit of a, a, a dusty closet, if you will. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if, yeah. if it, uh, if it works out it in the, the same, same way. way, because I mean, when processes like, are wildly different nowadays, oh, I know, yeah. but like, but but sanitation back, is a lot bigger. I know, but back then, but what I wonder is like back then those whiskeys still sat on the shelves. Yeah, hundred percent. So the weird part is is like whiskeys that sit on the shelves now, right? So let's wild turkey one on is like the easiest example. Mm-hmm. Does like a, a ninety one or an eighty nine or eighty five wild turkey one oh one is worth like five hundred, four hundred, whatever, eight hundred, yep. I don't know how much, but hundreds of dollars, right? On secondary. Um but we can go buy a Wild Turkey 101 at literally any store that sells liquor here. For 20 bucks. For 25 bucks, whatever it is. Yeah. And what I wonder is, will we think in 20 years from now that the Wild Turkey 101 today that we Just think right good. now is fine or yeah. whatever, will we be like, oh, my gosh, it's so incredible? Because mm-hmm. that's what we all do over, like, an 89 Wild Turkey 101 now, right, yeah. is it's like, I can't believe how good it is. And I don't know if it is that good. I don't know if this one is that good. <laughs> I just, it'll be interesting to see like in 12, 15, 20 years or whatever. I, I agree with you that they taste different. I mean, Carter will tell you he doesn't like <laughs> current day. I'm not a big turkey. like turkey fan in general. Sure. Um, but, uh, but, but man, somebody, when I first got introduced to the Dusties, I was like, what is this? This is, yeah, this it's a different is, animal. holy crap. Like the, the nose on those old turkeys, it's like blow yeah. you away. You know, it's like mm-hmm. vanilla, vanilla. And, uh, yeah. and, and anyway, uh, yeah. So I was like, okay, I do like Turkey. It just has to be older. And I know that right. sounds super duper tater. Uh, but like, I mean, dude, I just did, you know, the one one didn't fit my profile, but maybe mm-hmm. like down the road, you know, like it, it, I don't know if production is going to get up. My guess is we're going to start putting younger and younger whiskeys into bottles. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. my guess. So I would assume that current day Turkey is probably going to be, really good compared to what's produced in 10 years. Sure. It definitely could be. I mean, the, depending on how much production they've ramped up or whatever. 
Well, yeah. the rare breed. Well, in the in the thing is, is they have they're ramping up production to try to meet demand, right? Yeah, currently. So the thing is, is if demand stays the same or goes up, then that production isn't meant to have a million bottles sit on a shelf somewhere. Yeah. It's meant to meet demand, where so that everybody can have the amount that they want in there. You know, there's not too much and not too little. But like what you're like very recently, one of the rare breeds. Um, had really old turkey and I remember like 16 year old turkey or something. Yeah. That was, um, like last spring. I want to say yeah, they had within like, the past two years, they had like a 16 year lot of whiskey that got mixed in with the rare breed, yeah. um, stock because it was kind of funky, funky yeah. pretty much. And they didn't have anything to really do with it other than blend it out. So they just put it in rare breed. Yeah. So it is like one of those things, like you're saying, like some of these whiskeys do right now have really old stock in them. And like you said, who knows if Wild Turkey 101 or Rare Breed goes from 8 to 12, maybe 14-year stock to, you know, 5 to 8-year. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Something like that. So, Well, did you guys but, see that they just started releasing the 12-year 101 back in uh, Europe and Japan? Oh, really? Oh, did they really? Yeah. Sick. That's really interesting. You know what would be really cool is Having if they just... in Europe and Japan? No, it would just be really cool <laughs> if they just released it here. Yeah. You know I what know. I mean? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. freaking it. Like... Well, I get so sick of like travel exclusives. I get so sick of like, like, okay, Bland's gold and Bland's straight from the barrel and wild Turkey, like exclusives and Jack Daniels bottled and bond and like makers did it for a little while. Makers mm-hmm. now moved that bottle into, into like United States, non duty free, but it's like the Jack, have you guys had Jack Daniels bottled and bond? No. Yes. It's, it's, it's fantastic. It's freaking, freaking good. awesome. <laughs> Dude, it's so good. And, like, it's like, okay, you made it here. You bottled it here. You did all the things here. The label, I'm assuming, has been approved by the TTB here because it's in duty-free shops here. Yeah. Right, yeah. And it's like, just sell it here, and I'll buy it here. So, like, the like, some of the lines, though, like, blends and stuff like that, they only exist over there because that's who actually owns the But that's not the true. Because yeah. normal blends exist here, mm-hmm. and those people own the rights to Blantons as well. But, they're, like, the, the company that owns the rights to the, yeah. the, the Blantons yeah. isn't uh, Japanese-based. That's why they exist in the Japanese market. But there's a Blantons here. There is. And it's made here. I don't care. This is what pisses me off. <laughs> you you made it here. You aged it here. You bottled it here. You labeled it here. Yeah. You sell its little brother here. Well, and now gold and straight from the barrel are here. They're just mm-hmm. really hyper yeah. limited here, obviously. But it's one of those things where it's like, how does it take this long to put what we, what you're considering your premium whiskeys on shelves here? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a, it, like when we were uh, talking with David Jennings, like he he was like, "Well, have you tried the uh, rare the travel exclusive rare breed uncut unfiltered?" And I'm like, "What? That is something mm-hmm. that exists." Um, right, and, and then I started seeing them kind of pop up, like on secondary and stuff. I'm like, "Well, shit!" <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, definitely. So apparently, that's getting released here. Who knows? And okay. That's a, well, yeah, the, there's the the father son one. Remember the purple label turkey? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That one was amazing. We had that uh, down at Dan, Dan and Mike's, Julie's yeah. in Florida. Yep, and. It was fantastic. Like, and, but that was a, it was a duty free travel exclusive. And it's like, this is literally about your, the Russell's family. Yep. Not released in America. That makes perfect sense to me. Like, <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just don't, I don't fully understand. The, I guess those foreign guys um, really know all the history behind wild, wild turkey. I the guess. Russells, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, there's it, gotta be a reason, right? I don't know if there's like, I don't know if, if they like, if they get a benefit some sort of tax break. I don't know what you get from releasing travel exclusives. There's a reason. But yeah, they they're... like all of these companies doing it, especially the big companies doing it, mm-hmm. means that there's probably a damn good reason that they're doing it. They're just punishing so... us. They're punishing us bourbon drinkers now because <laughs> of the uh That's you fair. know the failures of our our people before us, the generations you know, That's in the fair. glut area in the glut era, right? Yeah. Uh they had to go to these overseas markets just to continue to sell. Yeah. So they're going That's true. you know I'm I'm being funny, obviously, but uh, that's a fair yeah. point, though. Like, actually, we should we should be punished not only for that, but secondly, for like the how out of control secondary is right now. Like, we uh, should everybody should be punished for all of this. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Oh my gosh, dude! It was like two years ago. I could get like a GTS for under four hundred. Like, yeah. you know, like yeah. what? Wait, 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 wait. You, you buy 
Ohio in secondary? No, no, no. Okay. I don't participate in that. Okay. No, hypothetically, yeah, he yeah. could have gotten could have, a George yeah. C. Okay. for under 400. Hypothetically. Yeah. I've, I've heard of people yeah. doing that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. right. But, well, yeah, it's, there, it's there, out of control. there's one question I had for you guys, and uh, it's, it's something that I, I guess I saw it on one of the groups recently or whatever. Is there a whiskey that you've kind of fallen out of love with that you loved in the beginning? Uh, or kind of like vice versa. Was there a whiskey that you didn't like, you know, initially? Like, like, what was your favorite bourbon when you got into it? And then later on you went, what the fuck was I thinking? That's terrible. And and vice versa. Was there one that you went, don't like it, not my jam. And then later on you went, okay, this is, this, I don't know what I was thinking. This is really good. There's only one for me. Okay. Oh, really? I know what it is, yeah. Because, so, Elmer was one of my favorites to begin with, and I still love Elmer. Oh, now it's trash, yeah. No, no, I still love Elmer. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure you're going with it. And, like, uh, EA's here, small match, I love that, and then I, I still love that. Um, you know, weirdly, I love Gentleman Jack, and I still love Gentleman Jack. The worst, like, the one that I used to be madly in love with and I think is mediocrity now is uh, Woodford Double Oak. Hundred percent. Oh, oh, that's no. still one of my favorites. You are. Uh, yeah, I, like I think that that whiskey is a mediocre at best. I think it's sixty dollars, and I think that nineteen twenty kicks the hell out of it. Nineteen ten kicks the hell out of it for less money. Booze, like, man. You know what I mean? Oh, the new yeah, nineteen twenty definitely kicks the hell out of it because that new nineteen twenty is awesome. I don't know what they did different. I saw your episode well, too. I did you wrong, good but... sir. How dare you? The new one is so much worse than the old. One. Hundred percent. Oh, I I don't think so. Do I have this backwards? Was it the nineteen ten that's better? I yes, the new nineteen ten is incredible. Better. Maybe that's it because uh, I I remember agreeing with you because I tried them both. Uh, okay, yeah, we we loved the new nineteen ten. Yep, yeah. So so oh. that's probably the case. So but... Sean, did you have a bottle that you liked? Uh, actually, just regular Woodford Reserve. Like I used to enjoy that a lot, and that was always my fanciest go to bottle. Um, and now it's like, I don't know the last time, maybe in a bar is the last time I, I got it. Cause mm. it was, that was the best option I could get because they don't even have like wild Turkey one oh one or something. It's one of the best shooter options still. Yeah. Woodford yeah. reserve. So here, um, bringing up Woodford, here's a question for you guys. You guys are the experts. So this is where we can get this. I don't know okay, that. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Loose. What's the, <laughs> <laughs> what's the reason if you know. I have no clue. Why is everything released at 90.4? What's the significance with Woodford? I have no idea. I don't know either. Okay. I have not a clue. I don't know why they do that. And it's funny because so does specific. Jack do that? No. Are Jack single barrels 90.4? 94 proof, aren't they? They're 94? Are they? Yeah. Okay. Aren't they 94? What's that, Ryan? 47. I don't know. Yeah, 94. 94. Yeah, 94. yeah, it's weird because like Old Forester doesn't do it, Jack doesn't do it, but Woodford does it. Yeah, yeah. and Only one. I don't know. I have no idea why, but it's annoying as hell. I'm sure there's a reason. I don't know if it's good or bad, but yeah, yeah. I didn't know what the you, reason was. I've I've never been able to find that out. I just curious if you guys have found that out. Could you imagine the Woodford Reserve brandy cask finish at cast right? master's collection at like 105 proof oh, oh my yeah. it would have been the best ball they put out in 100 years <laughs> yeah. at least yeah. and probably 200 and you know what come to find out because it's at 90.4 it's just the best ball they put on six years you know yeah. what i mean like <laughs> I, don't know. I, I think also looking back at it we were um very wrong about rise we oh, used to always say oh that like God. we didn't like rye whiskey or high rye Ooh. or like we just didn't like rye, and we were just so very wrong on that. There's so many videos that it like with, with the white wall behind us specifically. That's when we didn't like very many ryes. Yep. When we had that white wall behind us a long time ago, the, there I know for a fact that there are videos of us saying that we don't, like, don't like rye, rye whiskey yeah. at all. Really? And the only ones we had at the time were like Pikesville and like one other one, maybe Rittenhouse. I yeah, yeah. No in Rittenhouse, I, it's just one of those things where like we don't like Heaven Hills rise that yeah. much, is what it is. Yeah. And so. Now the Parker's rise incredible. Oh gosh, um, that one's Stone, super good. Heritage is, well, Parker's is still having hills. What yeah. I'm saying, like, oh, I thought you were just. We're not huge Pikesville fans. No, we blinded. Great mixer though. We blinded like Old Forster uh, Rye, Baby Saz Rye, Rittenhouse Rye, and one other Rye, like cheaper Rye. Is it the Russell's Rye? Russell's or not? No, Russell's expensive. Maybe not. Oh, Wild Turkey One One Rye. Oh, and yeah, like that makes sense. The, it just one of those things. Heaven Hill Rise don't stand up for us, except Parker's Heritage Heavy Char Rye or whatever that Barely was. Barely even counts. That was incredible. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that, that that's an amazing pour. And 
Yeah. I would love to have a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's funny because we go do picks and stuff like that. And a lot of times I gravitate to the rise more than I do the bourbons when we're on picks. Yeah. Just, I really like rye now. Yeah, man. That's, that's really wrong. We both really do. So, uh, so we're, I'm actually like humble brag. I'm going to uh, pick an old Forester barrel proof uh, like this week. And you want nice. to go beat him up? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, I, and I have my feelings about the old Forester barrel proof. Actually, I thought that they were going to be spectacular. Uh, like when they introduced that program, I was mm-hmm. like, yep. "Oh my god, things are going to mm-hmm. change here." And then I've had so, same way. so many misses compared to hits. Yeah. Now I've had some hits yep. that were hits, <laughs> but uh, but if they would do that rye that they released as a single as a single barrel like pick holy yeah. shit uh-huh. yeah my god i agree with you that that rye slaps yeah we have four uh old four the bear proofs. proofs i think only two of them we really like yeah so it's it's very hit or miss on those four it us. is some of them are really hot for the sake of being hot it seems like, like yeah. yeah it's all heat and ethanol and, and wood yeah but which is weird cuz i i thought the exact same thing you did i thought the 90 proofs are good, but like president's choices are have like old force or president choices are amazing. Lower, yeah. And, um, but they're like a, the one teens usually mm-hmm. and good range. Those, some of those old forcers are in the one mid one thirties. Yeah. So yeah. it's one of those things where yeah, that one right there. I don't know if the weird thing to me is I, they aren't as good. They aren't all as good as I was thinking they all would be. But what I think what's even weirder to me about the old forester single barrel program is like, we've seen one, not even in part, like somebody sent us a sample of one 100 proof. Yeah, thing. I haven't seen anything of those coming out. I heard yeah. something uh, that they were go- doing away with them. They only had it for I like a too. year and they're doing away oh, with them. That would make way more sense. Did five people get to pick them <laughs> yeah. at 100? Because yeah. yeah. I've not seen any. I, I've, I've tried seen one many. ever. I mean, that's it. Yeah, same. Yep, it's very weird. You'd think that those would be more available. Like, how easy? Like, they're watered down, they're higher yields, they're cheaper bottles, yeah. you know what I mean? Like We've got 890 proofers just sitting over there, and <laughs> I, I love the hell out of just about every single one of them. I was very excited when they said they're going to jump it to 100 proof, and then no one had any. Yeah. So it was like, all right, I'd like to try one, maybe. Is that because some reason they went to the, the barrel proof, I guess? Uh, I'll ask Jackie, uh, yes, Jackie in a couple of days. <laughs> Sounds good. So the other new barrel Let's proof, go. have you guys had the Elijah Craig yet? Well, we've got two in here that we haven't opened. Okay. Which one? Elijah Craig barrel proofs. Oh, the picks? Yeah. Yeah. And Ops is going to do another one on Thursday. Yeah. So um, we'll eventually have some in here. Um. I have the one that we have two of in here, but the ones in here are sealed. Yeah. And the Here's the cap. one that the pick that we have in here reminds me a lot of B520. Oh, like you off had the it. top of my head. Yeah, mm. I taste that at the store. That's nice. Yeah, you should have been to the store. You didn't know you were going. You didn't even mess with <laughs> me. Should have went. You were gone. Not a mind reader. You were busy. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> so I went over there just in in like the their shop over there, they like let you taste the store picks. So before just you buy them. Super nice. Okay. More stores need to do that. That's pretty and cool. And so I drank it and it just reminded me a lot of B520. It's a little younger, but I don't think it came across like youthful or anything. I think it's still eight or nine years old or something like that. Um, but it was like way super on profile, Heaven Hill, like the oakiness and like the oh, tiny bit boy. of nuttiness and all that, like that comes mm-hmm. from Heaven Hill. That's what it tastes like. You know what I mean? It wasn't anything like crazy off profile um, or anything like that. But but that the, the store that I tasted it at is known for doing on profile picks. Yeah. So, like if they do old forester picks, they're on profile old forester. If they do Woodfords, they're on profile wood. You know what I mean? Something yeah. like that. So, but well, we we just picked one of those. Uh, we picked an eleven year uh, at one. You you one, did right? Yeah, one twenty eight point eight. Yeah, you didn't. You waited okay. out in the lobby. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was a misunderstanding at Heaven Hill. We'll we'll just leave it at that. And yeah, we'll uh, that. Oh, and, no. and COVID restrictions only allowed four people oh. to go in there. Oh no. Where we had it set oh, up for a large group. Yeah. Yeah. It was not Dude, cool, but they should have just like snuck you whiskeys out the door yeah, the whole say, time. Just stand out the door and have yeah. them just hand you Glenn's and be like, yes or no? No. We're, we're, yeah, we're not going to rant about that. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, I'll just say we made some suggestions and they were uh, they were refused. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Okay. But anyway. 
Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's go to the next Next. question. Here, here you go, guys. Uh, Best decade for music: seventies, eighties, nineties, or two thousands. Oh my gosh, it's not even remotely close. The uh, yeah, it's probably gonna be the eighties, nineties. Punk oh. is the best music of all time. No. And I'm too young to be told otherwise. It's the 80s. <laughs> That's where we're at. So th- you like that <laughs> punk and grunge and all that from the 90s? Well, it's kind of like fake punk, but it was like, that's back when, like, the 90s and 2000s were original, like, Get your Blink-182 and yeah. Sum 41 and, like, oh, all the man. bands like that. Dude, those bands, oh, my gosh. Story I was a year. big ska guy. Like, and it, you know. Were you? Yeah, man. And, uh, like, okay. Less Than Jake was, like, my big band that yeah. I loved. Yep. And, uh, and, yeah, and people might think that that's not real punk, but to me it is. <laughs> sure. I, I got one word for you. Queen. Well, oh, oh, there you go. But, but, but do you overlap? Do you mean 70s it's, or 80s queen? Both. Yeah. He oh, means Sean. queen. Sean has no, Sean doesn't even know a single queen song. What? Name it right now. Bohemian Rhapsody. Not queen. Come to find out <laughs> written by Van Halen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. <laughs> I don't know why. I just like, um, the funny thing is, is for me, see, I, the only old music, I call it old music. The only like music from those generations like was Journey, ACDC, and that was kind of it for me. But I do still really like ACDC. See, like our like when we're cleaning the house or whatever, ours is probably like Queen, Billy Joel, Elton John. Yeah, but you and your wife are both ninety five years old. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, listen. Just I for, like just that for music. <laughs> just for, no, no, no. But I like you need the context of like they also like all they their favorite thing to do is sit down at night and watch game shows like jeopardy. We watch right. jeopardy. No, like, they, they like record like the whammy show. The I'm whammy pretty show? sure they're spinning prize wheels every night. Like wait, 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 wait. they're both it's like the oldest souls of all fake time. news right here. I, this, do you have two recliners that have the massaging backs? Yes, they both do. <laughs> no, nope, we just got one giant sectional. <laughs> 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 it's all a recliner. Sean can't watch a TV show without falling asleep. Like that's just kind of, it's just where they're at. You know what I mean? I did the other night. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm hundred percent sure. Yeah. Okay. So that's it's just a good funny. way to live. It's, it's, so I've got a question for you. Cause I remember I sent you a sample one time on a live stream and it surprised right. me a little bit. Um, I'm going to try really hard to remember this. No, you're, you're, <laughs> yeah, you're, you may have done a few. You since may then. have done a few. Uh, so don't worry I'm about sure. it, but okay. I know you guys aren't four roses guys. Uh, sure. For the most part, uh, I'm a Four Some Roses. I love the limited. I was gonna say yeah. Yeah, those are awesome. But uh, I'm kind of like an uber nerd when it comes to Four Roses. I I, okay. love, I love that shit. But do you uh, chase down all the different mash bills and stuff like that? Depends on the run. I mean, like you okay. know, if it's a good run. What the the thing is, I have an unfair advantage because generally speak, it, generally speaking, I pick a Four Roses almost every year. And so, like, okay. I get to taste, like, the runs, and I'll go, ooh, I like that one, I like that one, I like that one. I'll take a picture of, like, what what b- barrels that we had, and I'll chase those yeah. barrels down. Uh, okay. But, okay, that's that's nerding out hard. But uh, but uh, I sent you an OESO uh, sample, and you were like, holy shit, this is the best Four Roses I've ever had. Uh, okay. Like, and, and I felt very proud at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I think the... Oh, because we, we, um, one night with, uh, the Sprague sat down and tasted blind through all the different, or 10 different mash bills yeah. and ranked them. I think OESV came up. Yeah. First that's for a us. good one. I think that was our favorite one. I don't remember. Not, yeah, I mean, sure solid this is, choice. This is, this is why I can't get into four roses is because I can not dyslexic. care any less about the idea <laughs> of 10 different four letter I just, listen, if you want to just make me fall asleep at night, let's sit down and come up with 8,200 mash bills for you to remember. Can you name the five different ones? No. Do you know the two different first, the second letters? E. Yep. S. That's B. B. See? (laughs) You know what what really good is Al Young was really good. I have no idea which 800 of the mash bills were in it. I just know that I like it, right? Like, um, I love the Four Roses uh, Limited, the small batch. I love those. Like, every year, I I like those whiskeys, right? Those are, like, consistently good. We just got one. Um, Did you get the 21? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sick. I've, I've been wanting to try that one. 
Uh, not open yet, actually. I'm Tis surprised. open. Drank oh, it. okay. I was going to say, I'm <laughs> sure Dan hasn't already drank it. Because he normally just buys it and then just drinks it and then goes, you know what? I want you to blind react when we shoot it. Hey, yeah. Hey, Which you, is in like three you, weeks from now. Yeah. Have you ever had this guy who goes to a store and like uh, he'll call you and be like, man, I just found an E.H. Taylor barrel proof or I just found four E.H. Taylor single barrels? That's this guy right here um, today. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, then. cool. Awesome. Thanks. I'm <laughs> yeah, sort right. of happy for you. Actually, <laughs> uh, the, the barrel <laughs> proof. One, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The E.H. Yeah. Taylor barrel proof, we were uh, coming back from Dallas on Friday, and I was not low on gas, but I was, you know, getting to where I could put some gas, but my daughter was like, I got to use the restroom. And I was like, all right, let's pull off. And around the corner was a little liquor store called Manny's. And I was like, well... They ain't going to have anything. And I walked in, and right there on the front shelf is an E.H. Taylor barrel proof, and I'm going, That's crazy. well, this is a secondary store for sure. You know, oh, yeah. looked yeah. at it, and it was like 119 and I went, well, I'll pay that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's worth that, you know? yeah. yeah, how many of you have at that price tag? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wish you had more out there. I'd have taken them, but yeah. Right. Man. That's that was, such a steal. I was going to say the, the Four Roses is like the last thing. Because uh, it's recent that we've actually walked into a store and got to buy. Well, the Four Roses wasn't. The Four Is Roses it? was based on relationships. It wasn't random. Yeah, but it was in okay. the store. Uh-huh. It was not on a shelf. Ah, uh, okay. Nope, wasn't out in the public. <laughs> well, then I don't know the last time <laughs> I've gone into a store and thought, holy shit, I haven't seen, you know, whatever in so long. I'll buy it. How the Four Roses happened was I well, went to that store f- because they released their ECBP pick, and he was like, hey, um, stick around. And when I get them in it, I have some in the back. So we went to the back and got it. That's exactly how that happened. That's pretty sweet. Um, nice. But that's like, that's like we, we, there's two stores locally that we go to a lot. And, um, that's one of the two and then the, they're owned by father, son. So they're, it's like the same ownership. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, I mean, that's the 2019. That's how I got the 2019 from him as well. So, well, and I think, the 2021 was 200. So, I mean, it wasn't retail, but it wasn't insane. No, it's not yeah. Yeah. It wasn't secondary. But yeah. we, had, we had a friend of ours, Chris Francis, a couple months ago up in Montana doing a little camping. And uh, he sent us a picture and said, I think I'm going to buy this. And it was at a liquor store. It was uh, Warehouse C for 125 bucks. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. I he, guess. He it, that's, you know, I yeah, was like, pull, dude, pull the trigger, what? dude. Pull the trigger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can add a zero and sell that uh, yeah. on secondary. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. you gotta, yeah. Oh my gosh. Those things, I, the where, like every year, you know, every year the A's Taylors just go nuts. Pick every a new limited year. label for them and rip it on out there. Yep. So let me ask yeah. you guys this. To me, when I get when I got it, and I'll say this. Let me start here. I'm a wine guy first. I got into whiskey okay. because wine kind of to me goes along with whiskey. There's a lot of similarities in, in you know what you like and how you kind of whatever drink it and things like that. Um, sure. Do you guys like wine at all? Are you wine people, or do you guys kind of get into wine, or is wine not your thing? Yeah, I love wine. Do you really Dan, a lot more than me? Yeah. Uh, I know, I know like jack shit about it, but I do love it. <laughs> okay. Um, you know if you can drink it or not. Yeah. I know that, um, like that's when we went and did that dinner thing I referenced earlier, they gave us some wine when we left and I came home and like one of those was the most interesting bottles of wine I've ever had. And I have no idea what it was. I don't know who made it. No. Do you know anything about it? No. I, I looked them up. It, 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 it's in my search history because I looked them up. So interesting. Like which one was it? It was like the special one, one. The wax one. I don't remember. Okay. I drank it like the two days after I got home. Because there were two cabs. Okay. Then it was a cab. Yeah. Uh, because I gave, uh, I, we've got a Corvin that I just used for my wife. Because I, if we open a bottle of wine, then she then has to drink the whole bottle of wine. I like her. I don't like it. I like her. Yeah. So <laughs> it was like. No, I, no I quitters over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was like, this is really good. I was like, Chris said it was good stuff. So. Hopefully it's not expensive, so I can buy it again for you. It was expensive. It was expensive. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, do you just drink wine, Dan, when people offer it to you, or are you somebody who you're going, okay, I think I'm going to start buying some wine? Um, I drink wine when – You're with Ryan Elvis? I don't. <laughs> that's true. He can order it for you? That's true. Um, when I don't feel like having whiskey – or beer, yeah. Yeah, like beer and wine. I like flip back and forth beer, with beer and wine and like – because it is one of those things where with wine, if I open the bottle, then I know that realistically 
then it needs to be consumed relatively soon. Um, and that part kind of sucks, right? Like that's mm-hmm. the downside to wine. That's the upside to whiskey. It's like you can open a three hundred dollar bottle of whiskey and you can keep that bottle of whiskey for years. a couple of years, yeah. right? And it would be a, whatever. But um, where with wine, it's like if you spend fifty dollars on a bottle of wine, then you need to consume that night. bottle of wine, yeah. pro- you know, relatively soon. So, um, I love port wine like a lot okay like a lot, mm. I, i'm madly in love with poor wine thank god it's so cheap i love a lot of like i really like a lot of calves and then i what i would like to drink some of because i haven't had a lot by itself is malbec i've not had a, like i've had like two malbecs ever. See, i can i can do a, a malbec yeah that's economy right there calf. generally depending on where you buy it from. yeah but yeah. definitely but but you can find some really if, good stuff in the 20 dollar range if you're gonna look for yeah. malbec yeah. don't don't shop california shop argentina, argentina. yeah for sure. Okay. And Katina the more you know. family would be one I would suggest that Okay. 15 20 bucks and it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, see that's that's the crazy that part is uh, I went into our shop our local shop that I was talking about earlier and they're like they started their whole businesses on wine, yeah. right? So um they're like the the father and son are both super super into wine. And the one day I went in there looking for them all back for someone else cuz that was their favorite wine and uh Opperman was like, well, it's a good thing that's their favorite. And I said, why is that? And he goes, because you get really good wine for 20 bucks, is yes. what he said. Yeah, so, yeah. And it was like, and I bought some for them, but I didn't buy any for myself at the time. But we just did a double rye pick that's finished in Malbec. Yeah. Oh. And so it was one of those Ooh. things where it was like, I would like to drink some Malbec a lot, like by itself to see. Like I've had Pinots and Cabs and stuff like that. So when you have those and then you have whiskey finishing those, you're like, okay, these wines it. are sweet. These wines are dry, whatever, right? But with the Malbec, I'm like, I've never had, I don't, I can't remember the Malbecs I've ever had, like, alone, right? So, I don't know. That, that kind of stuff interests me. But port, I don't know. There's something about port. It's heavy and rich. Like you and say I it's fortified. It. It's just great. <laughs> goes yeah, well I mean, with a cigar. It goes well with a <laughs> yeah, cigar. True. Yeah. True. Well, let, we'll get off wine in just a second, but you and I always have this debate because I'm, I like whiskey and my, my, my kind of my routine is if I'm cooking, Uh, And prepping food and doing all that, I like to have pours of whiskey while I'm doing that. But once the food is made and we sit down and eat, I like to have a glass of wine. And then after dinner, cigar and a whiskey out back or coffee and a cigar or whatever. I say whiskey's not the best thing to have with food. My my friend over here thinks it's the best thing to have with food. I I like it with food. I don't know if it's the best, (laughs) but I like it with food. Because I think it's it's a good, like, palate cleanser. Like, if you're eating, like, a a fatty food or something like that. You have a sip of whiskey. It just like cuts that, that fat immediately. Then you can go back to like enjoying that, that. So does a big tannic wine. Okay. So I agree with that too. (laughs) I I, uh, so the question is, where do you guys stand on rather drink wine while eating? Yeah. Personally, I I, I usually steer clear of whiskey while eating because I I don't, it always gets weird for me. Like there's something I, I don't, I haven't found a pairing really that I thought, well, that I've done no, Okay, that yeah, I've, I have had good pairings of whiskey and the food. pumpkin soup. <laughs> yeah. We had a pumpkin soup with like an American, no, it was American, American prairie. prairie. And I don't even like American Prairie. This pumpkin soup with that American Prairie was life changing. Really? <laughs> a good pairing of this. Nothing I put together True. ever comes out fair. that I'm thinking, you know what? That fair. is right. Yeah, that's fair. I would just well, rather have like a stout or a porter, like a nice darker beer yeah. with food. Yeah. Okay. I'm a, I, I, I like wine with food. I'm on the wine with food. I, I, like, side so here. I, I, I challenge you to try like a cocktail because that's that's a little well, that's bit different. It's a yeah, but okay. whiskey based cocktail, like or a rye based sure. cocktail. You know, like if you drink like a Manhattan or a, like a Vucare yeah. or something like that with food. I've had a lot of. Old, As you can say, I've done old fashioned. I've had a lot of old fashioned with like steaks because when you go to a restaurant and they have an awful whiskey selection, <laughs> you just get a old fashioned right, yeah. or something like right. that. It's just like such an easy order, and most of the time you're gonna get something like relatively decent. You know, like yeah. worst case Ooh. scenario is it still has whiskey in it. Would you get that one time that they put orange juice in it? Oh, we were up at Snowdrift. Remember? Did you order it in old fashioned and they actually put orange juice? Yeah, in it? instead of like wow, uh, orange peel, orange or anything, peel. They <laughs> just put orange juice. <laughs> bitters. They literally yeah. put like Sunny D in there. Yeah. They're like, here you go, buddy. <laughs> it was like. Somebody's that's disgusting. That's yeah. Not it. <laughs> yeah, it it but, has three ingredients. <laughs> <You get one. laughs> See, I think for me, I think the reason that um I I would rather have wine with dinner is because wine is 
like the lower alcohol content is so much easier to drink and it's less abrasive. Usually it's so much more savory too than well, like a whiskey. Is. I mean, it can be, but like when you, when you drink whiskey and it's hot and it's a hundred proof or whatever, it's 50% alcohol. Right. Yeah. So when you're drinking, like when, and it, I agree, like one whiskey goes really well with like steak for me. Like if I'm going to go food and, and whiskey, it's, it has to be something like a steak, but if I'm going to eat like pasta or salmon, like fish, seafood, Stuff like that, maybe sushi, wine. I just love wine. I don't yeah. know why. I'd go. Th- I'd go with you there. Well, I, I think wine's made to you know complement the food, and the food complements the wine. And, sure. and to me, when you drink, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take a sip of whiskey with every bite and try to get something out of it. Sure. Uh, right. To me, it's just a side thing if I have a whiskey with food. Where wine, I'm actually sure. drinking it to enjoy it. And it's a part it. of the meal. Yeah. 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 And we did a whole, like, uh, old world episode, like, a few months ago or whatever. And and we first tasted the wines, the old world wines, before having food. And then we tasted the old world wines while having food. You know how mm-hmm. much better those wines got? It was, like, incredible. Like, they're, they're really made for food. Well, and that's kind of a, I think most people into wine would tell you that old world wines go way better with food. So if if you, you know, kind of expand your regions of wine and you get into French or Italian or something, those go great with food. And to me, I like a a Napa cab when dinner's done. If we still want to have a glass of wine, a big fruit forward, something out back, that's (laughs) fine. So just one of the, one of the, one of the best wine experiences I've ever had in my entire life, though, was this really expensive, like, I don't know, ten, you 10 or 11 year old port with a cigar. Ah. And it was, I've never had a port like it. And it was like a cigar I've had a lot, like often, right? And that, for some reason, that port with, and it was the first time I'd ever had port with a cigar. And I've never had that experience again. Like, I've had other ports with cigars, and it just hasn't been the same. But that, whatever that one port was, he brought it out of his cellar and he was like, you got it. Like, you got to try this. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to appreciate it enough. Cause he's like, listen, it's like 10 or 12 years. I don't remember how old it was, but old. And, um, he's like, they don't make it anymore. Like I can't get it anymore. And I'm like, then I don't want to steal your small bottle of port that's no longer <laughs> right. around, right? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, just try but he did it. it anyways. Oh, yeah. and then I drank <laughs> so much of it because I'm like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever had. Yeah. He's like, that's okay. I have four more bottles in the basement. I'm like, ring them up. Like, let's go. <laughs> let's ring them go. Out. But, yeah. All right. Here's, a, here's the next question for you guys. It's a two-part food question. So here's mm-hmm. the first part. Is a hot dog a sandwich? It is 100%. You want me to answer? I'm sorry. And part two of it, what is the proper way to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Oh, God. These are such, these are the easiest questions I've ever heard in my life. Very intrigued on part two for you. Okay. Listen, question one. Yep. Hot dogs and taco. Done. (laughs) (laughs) If it's anything, it's a taco. It's not a sandwich. If if it's a sandwich and a taco is a meat sandwich too. If you if you separate the bun yeah. and put them together, could be a sandwich. It's a broken hard shell taco yeah. at that point. Well, okay, you know Sean, when you bite but, a hard shell taco and it breaks. But Sean, by, by that thought, uh, what's a Philly cheesesteak sandwich? Is it not a sandwich? Did you rip the bun? <laughs> you make that little V shape know. and you put the meat in. Yeah. You see where I did there? Meat taco <laughs> with bread. I think it's whatever you want to call it. Also a taco. Oh wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not going to say a taco because that's stupid. We've just given up, barely. <laughs> but I don't think it's a sandwich. It's a taco. It's not a sandwich. It's just a hot dog, then? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's its own dog. thing. Okay. It's the Tennessee whiskey of sandwiches. It's like you a know? cereal <laughs> soup. There you go. Same question, yeah. right? Like, it, it, the same exact question is cereal soup because it's just something in liquid, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So, the, the way to make a peanut butter and jelly. Hit me with it. I'm Can we just it. say, like, the? are we just talking the ultimate peanut butter and jelly right well, yeah, now? Yeah, I mean, because some people will say, you know, you peanut butter both sides, jelly one side, or peanut butter one, jelly one, or jelly on both, peanut butter. I mean, what's the right way to make a sandwich? Okay. This is, there's only one way to make a sandwich. Go ahead, Patty. So, listen, you, you take two pieces of the worst, most processed white bread you've ever had in your Good life. Good and soft, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> right? The one with the balloons on the stupid uh-huh. <laughs> outside of the package. And then you put... Butter on the outside, and then you put peanut butter on the inside, and then you put it in a frying pan. That's oh hot. yeah, yeah. I'm I'm down with yeah. that. Grilled peanut what? butter and jellies are literally the best hey, peanut butter jelly of all time. Let me save you a step. 
put mayo on the outside. I'm not oh, doing mayo. That's just, I'm not that. Oh, that's oh, chefy brother. right there, baby. That it's is so much better. better. It's not. It yeah. is. It's so much better. It spreads easier. Okay. It does you, spread easier. up really, really nice. Gross. It gets a little good. crust. Mm. I've oh. never heard of that. Both of you do a fried peanut butter and jelly. A it's grill. So good. I don't because I'm lazy. It's it's just you do peanut butter in one half first, always, then jelly. That's with also a... wrong. What you do? You do jelly peanut first? butter? No peanut butter on both sides. If you're doing a normal plain Jane, what boring basic pumpkin spice boring. latte peanut butter and jelly? <laughs> one each side. We're doing peanut butter on both sides, jelly on both sides. I'm only getting one sandwich. I'm fitting everything on. <laughs> you know what I mean? There you like, go. This is going to be a pound and a half PB and J. Hey, when's the last time you've had one? Sandwich. Oh, oh I'm, okay. if I'm making one. Yeah, it's gonna be a big one. You yeah, know what I mean? Listen, I'm you gonna make four. Peanut butter's leaking out the sides. Jelly's leaking out the sides. Like, oh yeah. Oh, you're a monster. Hey, yeah, hey and you know what would pair really well with that, Rob? A nice Knob Creek pick. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me tell you how I dress up my uh, peanut butter and jelly. And you can tell me if I'm crazy. I'm actually gonna try your. Uh, a grilled peanut butter and jelly. I'm, I'm very. You've never about done it. that. No, I've never done that. Oh, um, it's just a grilled cheese with peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, I've never yeah. done that. So I'm, good. I'm thinking that peanut butter is just gonna run everywhere. You, you yeah. take it off before it does. It's okay. fine. It's All not right. like a gonna, you don't need to melt. You need to brown up. Yeah, That's you don't need to sear it to melt. Yeah, that's okay. great. What I do is, if I'm gonna, you know, make a badass peanut butter and jelly, it's the peanut butter and the jelly, and then I throw. Uh, Nacho cheese Doritos in the middle, a pile of them, crunch them together. Oh, okay. Excuse okay. you. And a big no, glass of no. chocolate milk to bite no. and drink with. And that's the ultimate. No. Nacho butter. cheese with chocolate chocolate. Oh, milk. it's the best damn thing no. you've ever had. If Don't you, knock it until you, you try it. You gotta try it. That's like some no. Ozark I'm, shit. I'm right trying there. yours. So come on. You gotta try it. <laughs> okay. Here's, there's no way. No, I'm not good on that no one. way that's any good. It's <laughs> absolutely no fantastic. You, a Dorito? If a raccoon made that sandwich, I would get it. <laughs> but I'm good. Oh. Here's another food hack for I you. Have if, heard if you eat tomato <laughs> soup, tomato soup, I don't. make like four. Mm-hmm. You don't? Okay. Well, then never mind. Yeah, but. he doesn't like tomatoes. Oh. Yeah, tomatoes are, are like disgusting. Uh, one of the worst foods on planet Earth at the front Really? <laughs> even like, probably. Even marinara sauce? Okay, no, no, because that's fake, dude. There's so much sugar in it. It's crazy. You know, if you cook a tomato, delicious. No, not it's true. It's raw, disgusting. If you mush it up and turn it into a sugared ketchup or a sugared marinara, I'll eat it. That's where we're at with it. I'm just eating it cooked. Like a nice French French dressing. Is that tomato-based? No. I think it's vinegar. It's got ketchup no, that's in it. Vinegar, ketchup man. and uh, a little mayo. Ketchup okay, has yeah, tomatoes. That, that's that's well. yeah. I was thinking vinegar red, yeah. Yeah, that makes me sense, yeah. shocking. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm not four. I don't eat French dressing. <laughs> you don't eat vinaigrette either, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, okay, so we have like one final question on the list. Okay, okay. okay. And and this is uh, it, this is a little tough. I'm gonna I'm gonna admit, but uh, you're going for your final nightcap. Like this is it, baby. I'm going that, to sing with the angels. I'm singing with the angels. Um, this is it. What what's what's your bottle? I think it's the same for both of us. No, yours might be different. Well, okay, hold on. I have one question back, and okay. then I'll, and then we can answer it. How much alcohol have I? Like, am I in a safe place where I'm not? This isn't like I'm not trying to like spin out of control here, right? You see, what I'm saying like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. I think, no, no, you're 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 cognizant, cognizant. You know, you're you're and I'm just, you're good. Okay. And I can, it doesn't matter the because because if I've had a lot and I want like one more drink, I'm gonna have something really low proof, right? Mm. Or mm-hmm. so don't die. Yeah, you're gonna die, so it doesn't matter what you. <laughs> yeah, what state you're in, you're, you're gonna die. So might be overthinking this. <laughs> this is the end of your life. Yeah, you're going to sing with the oh, angels. Geez. You know, you, okay. this is like yeah. your final meal before they shock you. You know, this oh, is I'm your. No, not I'm like tonight. I thought like, you like, meant like tonight was your last. Time. No, no, like, no, no, maybe no. Eagle Rare. <laughs> so, so you know, some people might say they want the you know that one pour they've never had, but some people say, look, I want something I'm familiar with, so I know I'm gonna enjoy it one last time. Sure. So what? It, ours will be different. Go ahead. Uh, I've said it in the past. It would either be no, pick one. We're not doing either's. We're not doing either <laughs> or. They said name one. You are such a cheater. Every time we play a game where they're like th- name one thing, Sean's like, I think this, this, or that, and I'm like, just pick one. Yeah, I want like a, a dusty Taylor. Oh, okay. I like that. Okay, I'm Ooh. with you on that, but it's not my pick. 
like a, one of the old Orcade tailors, Kentucky, yeah. the old dusty tailors. <laughs> yes. Um, like stuff we've never seen before. I would go, I'm going to mix her celebration without a doubt. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Ooh. Hey, you've had it. No, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> nope. But we've had Michter's 20 and we've had Michter's 25, 25 now. And they oh, were wow. two of the best whiskeys we've ever had, bar none, like yeah. without a doubt, right? So those being so incredible means that Michter's celebration, there's no way in hell it's shit. There's but no way. You die and it's just trash. You're just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> <I killed him. laughs> Maybe Michter's celebration is so rare because the only people that get to drink it are people passing away, like that. Yeah, whiskeys. pretty much, yeah. And they never get to tell anybody how it is. Like nobody reviews it because <laughs> they're passing away. Yeah. yeah. There it is. That's why nobody knows what celebration tastes like. That, that's right. And Unless you're, you're on the cast of Billions. Because they drink it all yeah, the that, time right, on that yeah. show. Yeah, right. shocker. Yeah, that's that. How much it cost? Four grand a bottle. Cool, man. Oh, I, I'm right. surprised that you guys right. weren't. Uh, none of you said King of Kentucky because you guys love that stuff so that's much. That's my or. Okay, that's my or. <laughs> that's your or. Yeah, okay. I told Sean Seven that he was going to tell you. <laughs> I, would, I was going to say, you know, if like Dusty's oh. were off and it was something that was like still being made today type deal. No, this is just. There's no bar, no rules. No, no, nothing. you can do whatever, man. I'm, it's gotta just be, a cage match, huh? It's got <laughs> to be celebration. I just think that I don't know that I genuinely don't know of anybody currently releasing whiskeys anywhere near those age statements that well. Anywhere near like those retail prices. Mixer's twenty is what six hundred to eight hundred dollars retail, right? Yeah, something like that. I don't hear a single person complain about retail on that bottle. Not one. Because well, seven people find it. Right. But have you ever heard anybody? No, we, you and I have heard people complain about Boss Hog. Yeah. We've heard people complain about lots of bottles in the two to $500 range. Yep. This is more expensive and nobody complains. Because I think people see those on shelves and they, they see the $500 price tag. No one walks in and sees an $800 price tag on a no, no. Mixer's 20. But buy a Boss Hog and post a picture on Facebook with a receipt. Instant hate, yeah. instant regret from everybody <laughs> in common, right? A lot of regret. Every you buy a Mictor's twenty for in your receipt says eight hundred dollars, and you put that on Facebook. Everybody's like, no way. Yeah, that's like, see, like there's there's this difference between like Mictor's twenty is legitimately a unicorn for a good reason mm-hmm. because it's incredible. Mictor's twenty five is even better. Yeah, we thought it couldn't be. Sean and I, Sean and I got to taste Mictor's twenty five after having Mictor's twenty. And we're like, there's no way 25 is better. It's going to be over oak. Yeah. We had 25. I'm like, literally. Why does 20 exist? The heavens have opened up and literally it's all over. This is it. So the, I just can't. Celebration has to be as good as 25. And you're willing and, to take that chance. A hundred. Well, I'll take the chance. I'll literally do it, be wrong, and then take the chance again. Cause I think I had a bad Mine glass. It could be hot. Trash. <laughs> I mean, so I'm, you're going to have to pour this in a different glass. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this glass definitely you has some must. You there. didn't clean it. Huh? That's not- yeah. <laughs> well, Hey man, we really appreciate you guys coming on and hanging out a little bit with us tonight. Yeah. yeah it was a great no time. No worries. Thank you guys for having us. Yep. Uh, now we get to turn this around in seven minutes and live stream. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll, Sorry about that. Yeah, that's why I wanted to get you guys out of here. Right this is great. Yeah, uh, we appreciate we, we, you guys having us on when we could. So yeah, we just get to stack content. It's easier that way. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, we really appreciate it, and uh, we'll see yeah. you over there on your live stream. Cheers, guys. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Cheers, man. Thanks everybody for joining us on this episode of Food, Wine, and Whiskey in Your Own Backyard. And until our next episode, enjoy your next pour. Victor celebration. <laughs>